Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Living a Dynamic Life. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, the first half. I certainly did. And welcome back to Steve Jack for the second half. Thank you. So we were discussing the uh, trauma that we have through life, through uh, political constraints, religious constraints, peer pressure, and all sorts of kind of very misunderstood emotions and everything else and the hurt that we go through. And you were making some suggestions on kind of being more aware of the heart center. And most people are not self-aware as to how they react in a given situation. Many people respond with anger, defensive mechanisms. Totally. And obviously that results in, you know, repeated patterns of behavior, conditioned responses and things. So how do you actually help people? Because like I said, you know, the three days we spent in London with, with the group in the, with the workshop was tremendous for me and I had decluttered a lot mm. of my emotional baggage. I understand and certainly for people new to the program it's a complete life change for them. What people tell me is that they come into something into a program with me like that and afterwards they're leaving like this because they really they see through the illusion of everything. Mm -hmm. So in terms of a pathway there's many things people can do uh, but perhaps before I go into that it'd be useful to describe the five key limiting programs that I'm seeing time and again present themselves in a way that's mm -hmm. creating this, these issues in people. The first one is, um, uh, is nutritional deficiency and toxic overload. Because of all the chemicals and the sprays and everything on earth, these, uh, this, uh, all this type of thing is being cluttered into our cells and, our, and people are quite toxic. Why this is a difficulty is that we're seeing the increase and rise now in the amount of sickness and ill health right throughout society. Absolutely. So, so uh, we're talking pesticides, insecticides, makeup. Makeup, Most spray, people don't realize, yeah, that everything. there's aluminium in underarm deodorant yeah. and all sorts of things, yeah. So I, I want to spend a minute or so going into the mechanism what this happens in the cellular reproduction mm -hmm. because people absolutely have to know this information for their health is that when you have more toxins coming into the system, all these toxicities and, and things begin to hit and interact with your DNA. And obviously your DNA is the architect of your cells. Your DNA doesn't actually do anything. They're a set of blueprint or plans. And these set of blueprint or plans tell and send inf inf information and instructions to the proteins how to rearrange themselves in a different way to make a new cell. Now, when enough of these toxins come in, what begins to happen is that the message of the DNA becomes difficult to read. Just like a set of architect's plans that were dirty and smudged mm. and filled with coffee stains and all these other types of dirt around, they would be difficult to read. Chances are that the building that you're trying to build off this set of architect's plans would not be exact replica of the plan. It's exactly the same thing that happens to the cells. What happens is that the cells then be begin to reproduce themselves and not in an exact replica to the blueprint because the blueprint becomes difficult to read. So a mutation. A mutation and a digression from the original happens. When enough of these mutations happen, these cells begin to clump together and they form little tumors and they form discrepancies in the overall immune system. And what I've noticed is that there tends to be a pattern of the emotional spiritual weakness in the person is tends to be the area of the body that these cells clump together in creating a tumor. And this is the mechanism of cancer. Mm -hmm. And it has the mechanism of cancer has that uh, nutritional deficiency and toxic overload as a starting point. Mm -hmm. But then as we come deeper to these other limiting programs, we will see the emotional spiritual underlay, which gives the direction and location of the cancer. So. Uh, that's the um, nutritional deficiency, toxic overload. And obviously, people are not getting enough vitamins and minerals and nutrients in mm -hmm. to our cells because of the amount of, um, uh, the, the amount of turning over mm -hmm. of the soil. The soil doesn't have as much nutrients in it. Mm -hmm. The second limiting program is movement deprivation. Okay, society, we're, we're not moving ourselves uh, as much as we used to because of our lifestyles, revolving around uh, sitting in the car, going to work, sitting at home in front of the TV and sitting at our desk. The average person probably only spends an hour and, a, hour, hour and a half on their feet these days if they have a desk job. And so this creates a lack of oxygen. There's a lack of oxygen in the system which creates decay. And so they're the first two programs what I see which really creates the lowering of the vibration. The third one is mental instability and faulty belief systems. Belief systems get inherited from four different levels in my experience. And again, I have to admit, I did not believe this when I first started many years ago, but now in the work that you do we as well, see, absolutely. We, we, we see it in action. Mm. There are four layers to, to belief systems that people hold. The first is the experiential level, things that have directly happened to them as a consequence of growing up, from their parents, from society, from teachers and friends and lovers, etc. These beliefs get to shape in their direct experience. The second uh, level is a, is a um, generational level, generational beliefs. These are beliefs and information that get 
holographically stored in the field of energy of someone's DNA that get passed on from their ancestors. For example, if alcoholism is an example, which was in my family, both lines, gets passed on from generations back Whatever is in someone's system, at the moment they conceive a child, all those belief systems get imprinted into the field around the DNA and get holographically stored in the person going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is why any clearing someone does is massively important for future generations. And past generations. And past generations, too. Yeah. absolutely. And, mm -hmm. we, and we work together in this way sometimes, yes, clearing. I mean, so. In the uh, Limitless program, we did a 22 generational clearing. Yeah, it was massive absolutely. for this one. Yeah. The third level is a history level, which means as the soul comes down into earth, it has many reincarnational cycles looking to achieve soul growth. This is mm -hmm. why the third dimension down here on earth is so popular to come, because so much rich learning has happened. It's a tapestry for learning and a school for learning. And quite often what happens if you have undealt with what we call karma, i.e. Issues, issues that have set in motion negative consequences in, in the past, if they have not been resolved in lifetimes, they also get st holographically stored and imprinted in your DNA. And I know that you know this as well from the work that Absolutely. you do. And uh, we yeah. see this happen time and again. So you can imagine a residual um, karmic imprint held in someone's field then starts to play out in someone's life over time again. And the scientists are actually proving this now, aren't they? Yes. That when we think something, the DNA activates, and we actually can you know, see this in action. But I, I really do believe that knowledge is power, and the more wisdom and knowledge we have combined with heart-centeredness, that's a powerful combination, isn't it? Well, 100%. And, and this is why I present the information to the viewers now, because at least they're aware of the information. And rather than just block it off as hocus-pocus, look into it, like mm. I did. Quantum and physics, quantum, yeah. Look into quantum physics. Look into some of the science that is coming now around called epigenetics, mm -hmm. which means above genetic control. Mm -hmm. This means the environment and what we can do is that we can shape our genes these days. The yeah, last level absolutely. of belief system is the soul level. So between these four levels of belief system, you can see how we can get ourselves into a real tangle between past life issues, generational issues, not to mention our own stuff we've had to come across. It's why we get stuck. But thankfully now, there are many people out there who are able to go clearing these things to allow you to be free of the constraints of the past so that you may consciously choose and co-create your future. So that's the belief system, which is the third limiting program. The fourth one is emotional instability. An emotional imbalance. If someone's not stable in the mind, what begins happening is that when something good happens, obviously the emotions follow and everything's good. If something not so good happens, of course, like a wave, this is what life is about. It's about expansion, stasis, and contraction. Mm -hmm. So naturally in life, there are going to be these cycles where then things are going to go down. If you can't control your thinking, the anxiety begins to worry and your emotions drop. And then what begins to happen is your vibration drops. So people are not balanced in the emotions because they're not stable in the thoughts. And this creates traumas, more traumas on the inside, and makes a real adjustment in their vibrational frequency going up and down. The fifth level we've already presenced, and that was woundings in the bioenergy field, which I don't need to go into again, i.e. these little woundings which are causing us to behave in certain ways. So they are the five levels of issues that are presenting themselves in humanity's case for holding us in the same place. If you begin to methodically and holistically clean yourself across the physical level, uh, doing some movement across the mental and emotional level and the woundings in the field, and you start to clean yourself in all those levels, I have seen completely remarkable results, mm -hmm. time and again. Me too, it's amazing. In a very, very short time, when mm. you can clean yourself holistically across all those levels, it's like a one plus one equals five. And literally- One in plus one equals sometimes 2,000. Um, it's the incredible. The differences I've seen in yes. some of the people I've worked with is just profound. And, and it's, it's so amazing. It's, it's just vibration. It's real yeah. privilege. And this is why mm. we do the events because it gives people the opportunity to come into the frequency and we can mm -hmm. clear and work on them nice and quickly. Mm -hmm. And they can go back to their home and integrate. And very quickly, in the space of a few days, we can clear and achieve so much. And what's interesting with the um, uh, cycles of Earth right now is that the energy frequencies are coming down are much, much faster. So what took me several years to clear, we can do in several days now. Okay, so the people are, are really fortunate to have these frequencies supporting us now on the planet to achieve rapid transformation and a real life change from a very deep level. Because most people are noticing now that time is speeding up, aren't they? Yes. And obviously you and I are quite soulfully aware, so we had uh, obviously the, the time uh, in December 2012 when all the planetary uh, alignment just 
happen. Kicked the energy into touch on the earth, didn't it? And, and reawoke quite a few people. So, so and obviously we had the Grand Cardinal Cross recently as well, because we know the moon affects us. Yes. We know the sun affects us. We'd be very naive to think that all the other planets Didn't don't affect. affect us. Of course okay. they do. So, so maybe, uh, seeing you bring it up, I'm going to explain it to people at mm -hmm. home so they have mm -hmm. an awareness of what's happening. Absolutely. Okay. So people were probably aware of the 21st of December. All that was was a resetting. Basically, the uh, Earth, which rotates around the Sun, many people are not aware that the Sun has a grand rotation around the galactic center, around the Milky Way center. And we have billions of suns like our Sun and our Milky Way galaxy, all of which are rotating around a center. Our Sun and our corresponding Earth and solar system take 20, around 26,000 years, 25,556 years to complete one full circumnavigation around that center. We completed that 21st of December 2012, and many of the ancient prophecies have talk, spoken about this time, the mm -hmm. Mayans and the Incans, mm -hmm. spoken about a golden age which we're stepping into. Mm -hmm. What this refers to is that, for example, if you and I are kind of the end points, so it's like a racetrack where uh, the sun is rotating around, it takes 25,000, 26,000 years to rotate once around us, the band of energy that is running straight through us is known as the photon band. There's obviously when the sun and the solar system are out here somewhat, they're not in this high frequency band. But now, for the next 2,000 years, our sun and the earth are in this frequency band of energy that is going to, we're going to be in for 2,000 years, where the vibration and frequency is very, very, very high. And what that is doing, and you're welcome to check this out on NASA's site of the increasing solar flare activity. What's happening, this energy is pushing increased solar flare activity from our sun, sending high in, um, coded light intelligence from our sun, because light is intelligence, mm -hmm. into our Earth's magnetic grids. These magnetic grids are accreting light, bringing light down from the grids, coming down through the um, sacred sites, which are the intake organs for this light frequency, down through the meridians, and out across the planet. Because of the nature of our light intelligence and our fascia, we are also able to hold this light intelligence. Well, the body is only made of light, sound and energy, isn't so it? So we are accreting this light. And mm -hmm. those of you who are consciously aware can use these time portals which you experienced before, like the Grand Central Cross and other things like this, mm -hmm. the full moons and the solstices. You are able to accrete more light into your system and achieve quantum fast growth. And what you end up doing is a great service for humanity because you begin anchoring the light more on the planet, which is kind of why I got taken all around the world for the last three or four years, anchoring Absolutely. my light and my frequency around, around the place. Now, so you, they can get an understanding of why this is so important is that in energy and vibration, there's a concept called harmonic induction. Harmonic induction is taking a high vibration and I, with my bioenergy field, I can take my hand and put it on someone's field, either remotely or in person, doesn't matter whether I'm with them or not, and pull out of them this dense, lower-held emotional vibration. And, I, and it's like a magnet. I drop it in, it comes up and sticks, it, sticks to me, and I pull it out of their field, thus making them lighter. Mm -hmm. And this is a law of harmonic induction. Like if you played middle C on a piano, all the other middle Cs would vibrate. Now, if you extrapolate this out from a one-to-one -one perspective to a planetary perspective, the photon band of light running through the galactic center is a very high vibration. It is coming into contact with our Earth, which is a third-dimensional planet of a very low vibration. Therefore, the, this lower vibrational energy is going to be pulled out of the Earth's atmosphere through the photon band of light. And as a consequence of living on Earth, we also have an opportunity, of course, to go through that pathway and shed our layers as well. So the evolutionary cycle on Earth is very exciting at this time because the Earth is getting lighter and raising her vibration, and as a consequence of living on her, so are we. And so therefore we can achieve rapid soul evolution. It's very exciting. It is exciting, and I think most of us would be very naive to believe that Mother Earth wasn't a living being in her own right, because totally. obviously we've got the trees, we've got everything that lives on it, all the planets are connected, there is a greater force, call it God, Allah, whatever you believe in, there's a greater force than you and I totally. even comprehend in totality, and probably never will, to be honest. It's the light intelligence that flows through everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is why humanity's always been so caught up with looking into it. Mm. And so... What we're able to do now is we're able to understand that this energy is here and available for us to use, and, and how do we set our sails to be able to make use of it? Mm. And that's why I put the Limitless program together, which you came to, mm. because it really provides these nine keys, which, uh, which I would love to share with people if we have time, but to quickly overview them so people can understand how you can come into these higher frequencies to improve your life. Would that be okay? 
As far as I can, I know, yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. So, so the, I, I developed these nine keys as a pathway of transformation to take someone out of what we call the maya or the illusion, but also into being able to raise their vibration to move past the limitation, the lack, and everything that was happening on. The first key is centeredness. And centeredness refers to being here in the moment. And being here in the moment refers to not being into the future with our thoughts or being operated by the lens of the past. Because really, this is an illusion of time. And the challenge that most people have is that they can't still their mind. You see, what happens is they're trapped between thinking about the future and not worrying about the past. And as a consequence, they're never here in the moment. So what I do is I teach uh, things in a different way. Most people teach meditation, which t mostly comes from the third eye. The trouble with that is that you're meditating in the field of thoughts. You see, your energy field lives in a sea of thoughts. Okay, your energy field contains all our thinking. So if you're trying to meditate, you're meditating in an in in energy field of thoughts, which makes it difficult. If you've ever tried it to begin with, you always notice there's thoughts walking around. What I do is I teach it to come into a dimension deeper than the energy field called Hara. And Hara is a dimension deeper, which is linked to our field of intention and is linked to the void. In the void, there's no thoughts because we're not in our human energy field. Mm -hmm. And so... You can go and you can find out about how to center on my website. I've got a free videos there. You can go check it out. It's just a matter of grounding your energy and coming in, through, having energy coming down your vertical power current, which is just like imagining a beam of light coming through your head, connecting you to the ground and holding in that, that vibration. And centeredness really refers to both a forward and back issue in terms of time, but also an up and down not being too spiritually up high without being grounded on the earth. Because so most people are not grounded, are they? Most no. people are in the head all the time. It's work, totally. sleep, work, sleep, worry, stress, doubts, guilt, fear. Exactly. All the stuff that society so willingly gives us. Absolutely. So what I, what I like to do is to ground people first. Because if you want to be of service on the planet, like may, many people are waking up to be, the spiritual hierarchy can only use you if you're grounded here on the third dimension first. Mm -hmm. So grounding the energies is the first thing, which is what centeredness is about. The second key is purity which is basically going through the cleansing and the nutrition protocols designed to get rid of your toxicity out of your system. So that's physical purity. We don't need to go into that too much other than the fact that it's good to go through cleansing protocols. The next which is good, actually, because um, it, we're in the time of Ramadan at the moment. Perfect and time it is for all it. about detox, to Great. be honest. So, 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 I mean, that's fantastic. So lots of clean water. Mm -hmm. you know, the, there's less stress on the digestive system during Ramadan. And then it's basically having vegetables and fruits in between times. Mm -hmm. and having lots of uh, vegetables and fruits to cleanse out mm -hmm. the digestive tract. So it's a wonderful mm -hmm. time to, to really dive mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. The next key is centeredness. And what I do now is I've linked these next keys to the, the chakra system. The next key is stability, which is linked to the first chakra. And this is part of the maya that people live in, that people think that the external world is what provides them stability. Their job, their relationship, their career, the amount of money they have is what makes them stable. But in truth, it's your internal thoughts and emotions which make you stable. And if you can stabilize those, what happens, it does not matter what goes on around you on the outside and external reality of life because you're completely stable on the inside. And when you can master stability on the inside... You can master life, it on the outside. You can master it on the outside. Mm -hmm. Then what happens then we move up to creativity, which is linked to our second chakra. And this is our second chakra is linked to our sexuality, which is creation. And so if you can stabilize your energy field by not going up and down with the thoughts according to the waves of life which come around you, mm -hmm. but you can stabilize it, then for if you can stabilize it, you can also shift your intentions into what you wish to create and hold the vibration of that which you wish to create in your field as if it has already been created. It's all Trust, isn't it? It's going back to trust in God, Allah, Source, the Absolutely. Creator. But it's finding it within yourself. It's finding it within Most yourself. Most people are not self-aware enough to even think that they can create. Most people don't even trust themselves enough to believe that they do have the ability to use law of attraction. Because, because they're, they're, they've separated themselves from, 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 the source. from the source, because the source is within us. Let Absolutely. me make a metaphor that we can understand. Imagine yourself as, a, as God as a body. And within the body, there is the individuation aspects of God, which are the individual cells. Are the cells still God? Yes, because they're, Absolutely. Because they're part made of, of God. Because they're part of, of the body. Now, in this metaphor, uh, the cells, if they know they realize they're part of the body still, will receive all their resources, all their minerals and vitamins and water and fluids they need from the body. However, as in the case of a cancer cell, cells that go rogue, cells that don't realize they're part of their body, what begins happening is that these cells then begin vampiring energy and resources from the other cells in the body. They begin attacking the other cells in the body to survive because they don't realize they're part of the body. 
So if you extrapolate this metaphor to us as humans, is that many of us have forgotten that we are creator, we are source energy. And what we do is we try to extrapolate love from our relationships, from other people, not realizing that what happens is that love comes from within us. And so what we do is we set up expectations of how someone else needs to behave for us to receive love. And when that person doesn't ex um, behave in those ways of those expectations, it sets up disappointment. And then we move from disappointment into blame. And so this is the letting go of expectations, conditions and attachments, isn't it? Totally. Which is exactly what is taught through most religious teachings. Exactly. And living yeah. without attachment. Absolutely. Living without the uh, emotional needs uh, of what, how other people respond because you're completely filled up yourself. And when you realize that you're the creator and you have source within you, you completely resource yourself and then you don't lose the need of the attachment of how the other person responds. You can be there in their pain and their suffering. So it's very important. The, the, the creativity piece is being able to understand how to manifest through thought, feeling and intention alone. That's not to say you don't take action. You do. You must take action in the third dimension. But once you've stabilized the thoughts and emotions, you're able to hold the frequency and the vibration of that which you've already had, or of that which you wish to create. Without holding the vibration of, of that which you wish to create, it's impossible for you to create it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not stable in the thoughts and you have faulty belief systems, uh, not in alignment with that, there's going to be a mismatching and you're not in alignment. And my, most of my work now these days is lining people's hearts, what they feel they want to be doing in life, making their heads make sure that they're in alignment with that and make sure their bodies are all doing the same thing. Most people feel they want to be doing something else than they're currently doing, their head's in one place and their body's doing something else again and they're wondering why their life's a mess. So it's, about it's not rocket science, is it? It's about coming it's into really, alignment. It's really, really simple. And then it's removing the fear to allow you to move in the direction of your heart. Mm -hmm. And then when you're, when you're in your heart, it's easy to manifest the field of energy you need to create it towards you. The next key is identity, which is linked to the third chakra, it's understanding your path. You see, my, my sense is that most people want to be of service and help in some way. And you only help and serve people in ways that you've had direct experience when you, in yourself, where yeah. you've improved your life yourself. You have no job teaching people anything that you have not mastered yourself or overcome yourself. You see, myself, I've overcome many things. Heartbreak, addictions, I mean, you name it, I've overcome it. And when that happens, is that you carry a code in your field. A code is like an upgrade code that you're very easily able to pass on to someone else through experience. Through experience. Through experiences you've had. For example, when I overcome alcoholism, is that I, uh, I, I now am able to support people very quickly through that process because there's an energy transfer that happens. So what you do is you take a look at your life and all the pain that you've had, and your pain becomes your greatest gift for your service mission. Because here, inherently, you're very well trained and, um, and have a great background on supporting other people through same challenges. So in this way, you see your challenges as your greatest gifts, and they become your teachings. So you can find your path many ways by looking into the shadows of life. I would say, Steve, that you have definitely, definitely, definitely found your path. And I could only say that I'm eternally grateful to you for the help you've given me. Absolutely. Now, we're just coming to the close of the show, and I know that we've obviously we're going to be working together in Ibiza um, at the end of um, July. And what would you say is your advice to the viewer out there? you know, in the last few minutes that we have. How long, how long do we have left? Because I've got four uh, more keys. I'll... Probably about two minutes. Okay, let me first present in one minute, the rest of the keys, and then one minute I can talk about how people can go okay. forward. The next one's love, which has been coming into the heart space mm -hmm. and holding the frequencies of love, mm -hmm. which opens a gateway to the spiritual energies. The next key is there's expression, speaking your truth based around what's happened to you in the past and being truthful in the moment, not fearful of what other people say to you or how they judge you based around speaking your truth. How often do in life do people not speak their truth because they're worried about the reactions? Exactly, most of the time. Exactly. This is also linked to divine will. When you give up your, uh, your personal will and link to the divine will, you become of service and opens up channels of spiritual energy coming through you. The next key is insight, being able to get the vision of all your life's experiences and hold that vision, which is also linked this vibration to divine love. When you have divine will and divine love unlocked in part of your human form, it unlocks the last key, which is knowing having direct knowing in all of your cells on exactly what next to do, who to call, who to respond to. It's listening to, to your soul, isn't it? It's totally li listening because mm -hmm. you know your next steps and actions because everything's in alignment. And that's the pathway I created with Limitless. And so if people, I guess, are interested in that, and they, uh, we run transformation events and retreats, they can go to my website and check it out. There's some free resources there to keep people started. Just reminders of your website, please, Steve. Uh, the website they can go to at the moment is steve-jack.com. 
and you're available on Facebook and you're on my Facebook anyway, well, on aren't Facebook. you? If people want to come and make, make friends with me. And I'm, I'm moving into uh, the energy that I'm channeling with my higher self, which would be Christoph, and so people may find me as that on the internet eventually. But for mm -hmm. now, they can go to steve-jack.com. I channel an energy known as uh, the Christoph Melchizedek, which is with me at the moment when I'm doing healings. And then people can come to events or retreats or the, even get some private uh, sessions if they want. I do private healing ceremonies for people. They can come to Ibiza and receive. So there's many ways people can get started. The most important thing for people to do from this information is to follow their heart. Absolutely. That's, That's the it. best advice we can give Absolutely. to anyone. Well, Steve, thank you so much for coming today. And hopefully the viewers will certainly go away feeling better, feeling enlightened, hopefully feeling more heart-centered. So, hi, I'm Miriam Louise Curtis. Um, I feel quite sad that this interview is coming to a close, but I hope you've enjoyed living a dynamic life. And I hope in the future that we get Steve Jack or Christoph back on the show. Thank you.